Lookism fashion video. You know how it is. Kind of a quick one this time around. I present to you Jay High's second biggest rapper and master of Chon Yang, How to Dress Like Vinjit. Vinjin is a character we have seen since early lookism, with a very distinct style. Deriving inspiration from the Korean rap and hip-hop influence of the time, Vinjin's style is very akin to what we would see from contestants of rap reality TV show, Show Me The Money. I've read through random sources that Vinjin is based off of rapper Binzino, which is pretty plausible. Vinjin's Korean name is Jin Ho Bin, which is an anagram of Binjino. Jin Ho Bin, Binjino. Yeah, Korean pronunciation. As well as Vinjin's hair growing to be the same hairstyle as Benzino's hair changes. I think apart from Vin's obvious physical features, Vin has very standard physical features for a webtoon character. He's about the same height as most of the cast and isn't drawn or written to be extra attractive. He is fit and does bulk heavily in the later parts of the webtoon, which does affect his style, but we will get into that. Lastly, for his hair, a super simple long middle part slicked back would do the job. Unless you want his haircut like his haircut before, which was just a neat short comb over with black hair. Except for that one panel where Vin dyed his hair blonde, even though it returned to being black the next chapter canonically the same day, but anyways. Now, let's get into the fits, where I identify each piece and give the price of each one. For his very first fit in the webtoon, we see Vinjin wearing a matching hoodie and hat, Rip jeans and black up tempos. The up tempos sit at around 260 US dollars on StockX for both the old and new versions of the shoe. For his hoodie and hat, I actually had no idea what these were. Somehow, whilst researching though, I found the answer on Tumblr of all places from user Ugly Tinted Shades. In this post titled Vinjin's Fashion Analysis, we now know the brand he is wearing is Hood by Air a New York fashion brand that had a hiatus but returned in 2021. I've actually never heard of this brand, but researching its history brings me to ASAP Rocky, who seems to be the biggest reason as to why it got popular. Rocky has also dissed and distanced himself from the company, only clarifying in 2019 that he felt he deserved some type of ownership of the company due to him being the one that made it mainstream. But moving on from Rocky, who is also being interviewed with the famous Ian Connor who he had beef with earlier last year, HBA was actually popular in Korea, seen worn by many K-pop idols at the time, including BTS. So yeah, this is the HBA hoodie and HBA hat, both of which I have no price figure for because of its obscurity in today's market. His next outfit is basically the same, just with the Jordan 6 Carmines instead of the uptempos. Jordan 6 Carmines going for around 260 US dollars as well, the same as the uptempos. Vinjin's next outfit is an outfit that looks basically the same as the last, and is followed by a Stussy jacket and Obey fit. This Stussy jacket seems to be some type of puffer jacket or windbreaker in black, with a tiger stripe camo on the sleeves. This Stussy jacket was very hard for me to find, this jacket being a very close version if not the one that they base it off of. No price however, as it is pretty old. Similar with the Obey hat. Retail for the hat would be around 40 US dollars, but I don't think Obey sell their Swagapino era hats anymore. On his feet are a pair of old schools, which retail for about 80 US dollars. Vinjin's next fit is a lot cooler but simultaneously goofier than his previous. That being a Vetements metal logo top. Now, I know so far in the video, finding the exact pieces have been difficult, resorting to Tumblr and alternative so far, but once again, this one had me stumped. Mainly because this top could be this long sleeve, however this was the only photo I have of the long sleeve, despite all the other results having very popular photos, so I'm not sure if this is it or if it even exists. It could be this Vedemont's wool sweater, which looks a bit more similar but also not as it doesn't look knitted in the illustration, as well as the difference in the hemming. And lastly, the hoodie, which has the logo placed in the complete wrong place, but was also worn fashionably the exact same way Vinjin was wearing it. Kanye Rihanna, pictured here with the sleeves all the way down to their hands. The wool sweater sold on Justin Reed for 500 US dollars, 
and the hoodie is listed in a size medium for 1700 US dollars on Grailed. The long sleeve, however, I could not find a price for because of how obscure it seemingly is. In Vin's next outfit, he's seen wearing the same up tempos as before, as well as a familiar jacket I talked about in my Wuin video. In the Wuin video, I talk more about how popular this jacket was whilst on my trip to Japan, but anyways, this is the Supreme Faux Fur Bomber Jacket that came out in 2017 for the fall winter season. Currently on Grailed, there is a listing for 1800 US dollars and a previous listing for 1250 US dollars. A very nice jacket that I ooh and ahed in my previous video. In this outfit, we have Vinjin in an unknown jacket. When looking at it, the closest thing I thought of was a Japanese sukajan, or souvenir jacket. A Japanese American style bomber jacket that Americans brought home from Japan after World War II, commemorating their jackets with a traditional Japanese stitch pattern. Whilst it could also just be a bomber jacket, the material from the illustration, for me, gave a silky impression, most sukujan being made of that kind of material. Either way, a very easy jacket to replicate for your own outfits, whether it is a sukujan or just a plain bomber jacket. For this fit, we see a Palace logo creeping up under Vin's school shirt on his t-shirt. I don't remember Palace ever having their logo on the front of the shirt like that, only on the back, so Vin could possibly be wearing this shirt backwards. For this shirt, you could buy a classic logo for resale on Grailed, but Palace is still making shirts with their logo today, just with a bit more of something. For example, this Try Hearts logo that was selling for retail for 65 US dollars. And look at that logo, way cooler. Vin's next outfit is pretty dope. Here we have Vin in another Supreme jacket, this time a New York Yankees leather varsity jacket. A timeless piece that I think looks super nice in real life, as well as on Vin. This jacket is currently listed for 1500 US dollars on Grailed, authenticated in a size large. His hat has circles, a square, X's and a triangle. I do not know what hat this is, but it reminded me of this Balenciaga PS5 cap due to the symbols they used. The Balenciaga cap sold retail for 420 US dollars. He also has a change in glasses the normal black to a patterned pair. Later, switching to a combat pair of mirrored swimming goggles so they don't fall off whilst he's fighting. All around, a nice fit, especially with the jacket. Again, Vin is wearing a varsity jacket and black hat combo. The black hat is a Stussy hat with the Stussy International logo. A Stussy hat retails for about 40 US dollars. This exact hat was a bit hard for me to source a few hats with a similar logo or a different color being a few I could gather. The only one of the exact looking hat was this listing on Carousel, a Southeast Asian marketplace. This was listed on Carousel for about 18 US dollars. For the Varsity jacket, Vin is once again wearing Supreme. This time, it is the Supreme Playboy Varsity jacket in red. Not as cool as the Yankees leather Varsity jacket, but still very clean. This jacket was listed on Grailed, authenticated in a size large for 1300 US dollars. For his next outfit, Vin's jacket is another varsity jacket, this time from Off-White. These jackets are about all the same, so even though I couldn't tell enough from the image to find the exact one, this grout listing for this jacket is a good price determinator, being currently listed at 465 US dollars. If you were to not buy from Grout and wanted a varsity jacket from Off-White themselves, well, for retail, the current array of varsity jackets they are selling are currently selling for around 3,000 US dollars. Bit of a price difference, eh? They are way nicer and definitely have more of that Louis Vuitton Virgil Abloh vibe than the other Hype Beast Off White Era vibe, but yeah, definitely way more expensive. Next outfit is a boar, just a white Adidas three stripe long sleeve. Or I guess two stripe? Huh? Anyways. This would be a retail price at around 50 US dollars without any sales. Now for Vin's next outfit, he wears this for a lot of chapters, similar to his part one outfit. This outfit definitely gives me show me the money vibes as well, but alas. Here we have Vin in a very simple red flannel, white shirt, gold chain combo. Very normal and despite him wearing it very often, not much to talk about. He rocks this fit with white air forces. As I have literally nothing to go off of with brands, I have no idea if this flannel is expensive or not. 
When toying with the idea of it being expensive, I thought of Off-White, and on Grailed, this flannel from Off-White was previously listed for 184 US dollars. However, if you want to rock this outfit, any flannel, such as this cheap flannel from eBay for 40 US dollars, would do the job. His next outfit is also just a blue flannel. This was the era of lookism, however, where I did notice many of the characters wore some of their most boring fits. For example, Zack, who wore those lame tracksuits, and DG was not even in the story, as I'm sure Park Dae Jun did not have the heart to dress him in any lame fits. Vin's last outfit that he's still wearing right now is the Chon Lang tracksuit set. This is a creation from Park Dae Jun Comics for the Lucasm webtoon. But there is good news. They actually do sell this jacket. Yep, if you did not know, Park Dae Jun Comics actually have their own merch store, Archive P. Here, we can see the exact Chon Lang track jacket that Vin Jin wears, being sold for 89,000 Korean won, which is roughly about 65 US dollars. Pretty affordable if you ask me. The only clothing we've seen Vin wear is the white air forces he wore with the tracksuit, as well as, damn, uh, these Supreme Hanes boxer briefs, which retail for 7,700 Japanese yen in the Supreme store, or 50 US dollars, for a pack of four. And yeah, that was all of Vin's outfits. All around, the show me the money influence is certainly there, especially early on, where his hoodie hat combo was very Asian rapper-esque. The choice of HBA as his brand definitely being intentional. In terms of recommendation, the best recommendation for how to dress like Vinjin in this video would be the Chon Lang jacket from Archive P. Also from Archive P is Vin's official sunglasses, which can be bought from the website for 129,000 Korean won, or about 100 US dollars. Apart from that recommendation and the advice that any flannel would work for his flannel outfits, I don't think I have much else to say in terms of recommendations that I haven't already said. In my Joker video, I pretty comprehensively went over everything there is to know about varsity jackets and how to go about procuring them. And his other fits were really just normal hoodies and hat combos. But I don't want to leave on just that. That's lame. So let's do a bonus round and look at fellow Chon Lang native Taejin from the Workers First Affiliate. As soon as this man appeared on my phone screen, I knew he had some other source about him. First of all, he's like the first melanated character I've seen apart from Mandok, who just wears his school uniform. Taejin is seen in this image with two rings that I can identify, both of them being chrome hearts. And as y'all know, chrome hearts makes me fuck with the character style way more. Here, more so than Wuin for example, Taejin wearing some seriously nice jewelry pieces as opposed to the basic clothes that Wuin wore. On his pointer finger, he is wearing what I think is referred to as the PJ ring. This ring is sadly not listed on Rinkan or popular enough for me to know how much retail it is. However, I did find this pricing by a Japanese site for 1800 US dollars. Take this with a grain of salt though, as I really only trust Rincon and Chrome Hearts themselves for Chrome Hearts pieces. As should you. This is a topic for another video though, because this includes my unwillingness to buy Chrome from Grailed. On his thumb, I believe it is a Chrome Hearts dagger ring. Now, with this ring, there are two options that this could possibly be. It could either be this sterling silver dagger ring, a very nice ring that I was eyeing on my trip, but ultimately didn't choose. This ring is currently listed on Rinkan for 116,000 Japanese yen, or 770 US dollars. A super nice ring. But when I looked at this originally, I noticed the ring did not have that sulfur look that gives Chrome Hearts rings their distinct and iconic black details. Well, I say that, but not all pieces do. And after seeing the shine glimmering from the ring, I think this may actually be the same dagger ring, but paved with diamonds and in 18 karat gold. Chrome Hearts jewelry, pricing from cheapest to most expensive, is their silicon, then the sterling silver, followed by 22 karat yellow gold, then both gold diamond paved jewelry, in 22 karat yellow gold and 18 karat white gold. So yeah, as it falls into the last category, this is definitely an elite piece, priced high at a whopping 1.2 million Japanese yen, or 8,200 US dollars. Mental. What's more mental is that it's not even the most expensive thing Tajin is wearing. That honor goes to his timepiece. On his left wrist, Tajin is rocking a Patek Philippe Nautilus in white gold with a blue dial, model 5811. 
an absolutely beautiful watch that would seriously be a dream watch for many. On Chrono24, the biggest watch market, you will find these watches selling from anywhere upwards of 150,000 US dollars. Giving Taejun the most expensive outfit I've spoken about thus far. Round of applause to him. I'm glad Vinjin was able to allow me to talk about this man's style, because when I saw those accessories, I was floored the first time I read it. So sick. He also is wearing a silver cross pendant, which I can only assume is chrome hearts. Whatever specific piece it is, probably being around the 1200 US dollar region. This isn't even it. He's also wearing a Louis Vuitton belt, which would retail for 800 US dollars, and a Gucci vest, which I can't even find a price for. I think if you couldn't tell already, I was a serious fan of Tajin's fits, and I'm just glad I was able to talk about him in a video. Definitely worth the missing recommendation section if you ask me. Plus, the varsity jacket recommendation can be found in depth in my Joker video. But yeah, that's it. If you enjoyed this video on Vinjin and the bonus section on Tajin, then let me know by hitting like, subscribing, and commenting. Most of y'all watching aren't subscribed, so it would be sick if we could run those numbers up. Uni is back, which will likely affect my schedule, but it is what it is. Who do y'all want to see next? Peace and love. Bye.